Jamal Bana was the kind of son a modest immigrant family pins its hopes on. 20 years old, the oldest of seven, a college student studying engineering, preparing to live the American dream. Then last fall, his family says, suddenly, with no warning, Jamal disappeared. A few days later, the phone rang. A local community activist translates for the boy's mother. And he said, I'm in Somalia and hang up the phone. Somalia, violent and deeply poor, was the place Jamal's family had fled in hopes of building a better life. Now he was mysteriously back there. Why? Through short, fitful communications in which Jamal always sounded guarded, the family came to believe this is what he was caught up in. A vicious, chaotic civil war between Somalia's government and a terrorist group called Al-Shabaab, linked to Al-Qaeda. Family and friends believe Jamal was recruited to fight with Al-Shabaab. But that wasn't the worst of it. Omar Bolai, a close family friend, says then came another contact earlier this month and the shock they never dreamed possible. So his father wakes up Saturday morning and someone has told him that there's a picture of his son. What happened? Yeah, to the internet and uh, he was really upset and when he saw... Jamal Bana. That's Jamal Bana, yeah. Pictures posted on the internet show a man with a fatal bullet wound to the head, the same man being carried through the streets of Mogadishu. The parents believe this is Jamal. The circumstances of his death are unclear. His mother still barely able to talk about it. As somebody must have put something in his mind. Uh, he must have been somewhat disillusioned and indoctrinated because he didn't have any clue about Somalia at all. Who convinced Jamal Bana to go to Somalia? An FBI official tells me the Bureau is investigating what appears to be a substantial recruiting effort by that terrorist group, Al-Shabaab, in immigrant communities across the U.S. More than a dozen young men of Somali descent have disappeared from the Minneapolis area alone in recent months. At least three, including Jamal Bana, have wound up dead in Somalia. There was also Shirwa Ahmed, who blew up himself and 29 others last fall the first ever suicide bombing by a naturalized U.S. citizen. Uh, he, he, and just he, he weeks ago, out. community uh, activist uh, Abdi Rizak Bihi lost his 17-year-old nephew, Burhan Hassan. Do you know about their methods? How do they do this? Do they come in and talk to these young men inside the mosque, outside? Do they call them on cell phones? Do they kidnap them? They kidnap them in the sense of mental kidnapping, not physically, but they play a role of male role, a mentor. Be he, community leader Omar Jamal and others say they hold one place at least loosely responsible. All these kids missing, they all have one thing in common. They all participated in youth programs in that mosque. This is just a leafy working class street in Minneapolis. It seems like an unlikely setting for it, but some community leaders say that this is the center of the recruiting effort to send those young men to Somalia. The Abu Bakr as Sadiq Islamic Center, and we've not been allowed to film inside, but we did catch up to the imam of this mosque at another institution where he works. They are saying that your mosque is responsible, that you allowed, at the very least, people to come in and recruit these young men to leave and go fight with the militants. What's your response? Uh, that is, that is the basically ac accusation, really. Uh, the mosque, the mission of the mosque is a, uh, to worship. It's a worship place. And people come to worship and go. We don't have any control of what comes to everybody's mind or ideology. Sheikh Abdurrahman Sheikh Omar Ahmed says at least two of the young men who died did worship at his mosque. But he says no recruiters came around. His mosque does not support al-Shabaab. And he says he's encouraged local families to keep their sons from going to Somalia. The imam has not been accused of any criminal wrongdoing. Separately, federal authorities recently made their first arrests in the case, charging Salah Osman Ahmed and Abdi Fattah Yusuf Issey with providing material support to terrorists and conspiracy to kill, kidnap, maim, or injure people overseas. CNN could not reach Ahmed's attorney. Published reports indicate he planned to plead not guilty. The other suspect, Issey, has pleaded guilty to at least one count, providing material support, and is cooperating with federal authorities. And this may be just the beginning. In court papers obtained by CNN, his attorney says Mr. Issey will not be the last defendant indicted. 
cold comfort for families who fled violence and terrorism only to find it followed. How do you think his family will do from here? He was the oldest. Tough. Uh, last time uh, you were with, with me and when we went home and uh, she doesn't want to hear the history again because she told me whenever I see someone who's talking about my son, I feel bad, I cannot sleep, I get sick. So this happened, nothing I can do. We pray for him, that's what she said. And that's what I believe. Brian Todd, CNN, Minneapolis. Brian Todd, excellent reporting you've done, uh, and you're getting new information on how these guys actually, what, went over to Somalia? That's right. We spoke to a local travel agent in Minneapolis. We were asked not to give this agent's name or the name of the business wolf. This person says that one of the uh, young men who died traveled from Minneapolis to Nairobi, Kenya on November 4th of last year. This agent says that agency sold tickets to at least two of the young men who died. Uh, he has, this agent has seen a pattern of young men flying to, from Minneapolis to either Nairobi or to Dubai in the UAE, paying about $1,800 in cash per ticket. Now, from one of those two cities, uh, this agent says they make their way to Mogadishu on a Somali carrier named Da'alo Airlines. But this is essentially the pattern that this agent has noticed in their travel. And, and, and Brian, one of the things that is raised by this, obviously, one of the big fears is if they can go this way, in this fashion, what is to keep any of these young men after being indoctrinated or joining such a movement and coming back That here? is a real concern. An FBI official told me flat out they cannot rule out, the Bureau cannot rule out the possibility that these young men, when they're trained in Somalia, could come back to the United States and conduct a terrorist attack on U.S. soil. Many of them have U.S. passports. Mr. 